anymore. Now, this stuff can be composite, it's better chopped, but we're going to just lay it in as it is. So just put it's actually quite nice because there's kind of fibre in the middle, it will help to keep the heap open at this point. A layer of household again. Some of this will be better to chop a bit more like that collie. It doesn't matter too much, and there's a sweet potato here because it does happen to break down. And the British store is a store I popped in this bin last time. I don't be afraid of handling this stuff. This is wonderful product called soap. So you can always wash your hands afterwards. You know, it doesn't matter. None of this is particularly obnoxious. So you don't want the heat to exceed 70. But if it does, then that does actually destroy the mesophiles. But drawing that high temperature when it's between 50 and 70, they're dormant. Once it drops below 50, those mesophiles start to become active. They're probably most active, their optimum temperature is probably, I'd guess, probably about room temperature, really, about 20, 20 degrees, probably what their ideal. This effect in many ways is the old traditional method of making compost in Jersey. It's a traditional fertilizer. It's for use for uh, as a cooking fuel as well, dry to cook for burning. And then the ash, which is very high in basic elements, would actually be sold to farmers for use on the fields. But uh, it's used directly to feed grassland. Usually this, this type is used to feed the grassland. It's only very, very thin smear put on so as not to burn out the grass. And the laminara types, this type, are traditionally used on bare ground. There's a couple of frosts and uh, all the cell walls here are layers, they all split and it quickly disappears into the ground. These purple ones, if I'm not mistaken, are the ones that contain a gar. You can uh, usually rub them apart. But uh, these are actually edible. In fact, they're all edible, so I don't know. That's an ed I believe that's an edible species. Although, I don't really fancy eating what's living on it. So anyway, let's get one more spoonful of that on. Alright. So I think when we're getting near the top of it now, we're two thirds full. Yeah, a bit squashed down the bottom. Yeah, a bit of an old, some old, old potato peeling. No, it's a citrus rind. These actually don't tend to break down too well. Looks like it was once, it was once a grapefruit. Yeah, it's breaking down, but citrus fruits generally don't like to break down too well. I don't know why. And it's acidity. Another thing which always seems to struggle in the compost heap is avocado skins. This is riding the steam. important to break it. Smells sweet though. Very sweet smell. Trying to get a huge pineapple there. But let's see it's that's uh, it's actually stuck on the fork. And you can see how well that's just breaking down. That was uh, the top of pineapple that was put in there ten days ago. As you can see it's the you know, shedding its leaves is you know Turn into mush. Look at what you want. That's on the waist. Uh, yeah, let's 
Pretty much. Now, a lot of people talk about mixing the materials before they actually build the heap. Actually, it's very difficult to mix materials. I mean, they're, they're not consistent. And what I do here is building in layers. It's a much better method. And then I think. Right, drawing to the end now. I just brought the amount of water up to the about 12 gallons. Well, I sort of estimated I'd probably be using in this heap about half what I would normally use. You can it wasn't already rain sodden. Straw there. Last of the pre made compost. It is really more or less to insulate it you know, and to, uh, to keep the heat in and to uh, oh, off the goes between pallets. It seems these are made of pallets, exactly the right size. Then. There. There. Right, after I built this one yesterday, which you can now see that I've uh, covered, I'm going to build another one in here today, the same, and then in two weeks' time, these two are going to be folded over together here. One thing I just want to point out as well is that on top of this. Uh, one here with a couple of corrugated sheets just weighted down with these old stakes. Now, these are all tantalised timber. None of the timber that's been used in this compost is tantalised. In fact, this stuff, CCA treated timber, it's full of cadmium, copper and arsenic. Now, if that is designed to preserve it, it still rots. And when that rots, it bleeds and it gets into the soil, gets into your compost, and then ultimately gets into your food. So don't use it. Except the fact that things rot. Use untreated timber for building a compost heap. Use waste timber like these, like pallets. Anyway, as I say, I'm going to build this one today, and I'm not going to bother filming it too much because building is exactly the same. Layer of straw, layer of compost, layer of horse manure, layer of seaweed, layer of straw, compost, horse manure, seaweed. On each layer of the seaweed, we'll sprinkle gypsum. And you're looking at, you know, using no more than 30 gallons, 25 gallons really, in here. Um, so that's, you're looking at a maximum of about 12 to 15 gallons per square metre of water. In this case, I'm going to be using half that volume. So probably, probably around about eight. Anyway, all right, so there we have it. Two hips, one, two consisting of four one meter units so that's two square meters two square meters or two cubic meters each they're all built they're going to be left now for two weeks possibly as much as twenty days two to three weeks heat up break down they'll shrink they should lose about a third in height then after that period these two will be turned into each other Three of them will turn into here. This will leave one quarter over. That quarter is a starter for your next heap. And that's about it, really. Finished. Let's come back in two weeks.